Dr. Ryan, well, where did the rumor get started then that this causes cancer? So that's that's a great that's a great um, thought. Well. A lot of people are interested in growth hormones, creagogs in particular, omnitrope. But the one thing that uh, keep, that worries them is the risk of cancer, or whether or not it actually does cause cancer. And so there's a great article out there that kind of looked at this. Here is a great article that kind of puts some of those concerns to rest. One area of medicine that has been studied pretty um, extensively is children that have suffered from brain tumors that require growth hormone treatment long-term. And you would think that in this group of individuals, you would see, well, hey, if you're taking growth hormone, if you're taking Omnitrope, which is the same growth hormone I utilize for you guys, I use this because it's well-studied and it's utilized in children, very safe profile. You would say, well, hey, if these children are taking growth hormone, well, you know, if it truly really is associated with cancer, they should be teaming with tumors, right? And the evidence suggests that it couldn't be farther from the truth. And so, number one, why are we treating these in, these children with um, growth hormone? Well, unfortunately, when we have brain tumors, sometimes it can affect your pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is where we release growth hormone, right? And so if it's affected, you may have growth hormone deficiency. This article is a review article. The review article is your basic article that take a summary of all of the relevant literature regarding that particular topic and kind of summarize it. And this article was in Pituitary in 2021, and they looked at a whole bunch of different articles looking at that basic idea. Does growth hormone therapy, is it linked to uh, cancer and non-malignant uh, tumors? And what they actually found was that the vast majority of the papers they surveyed suggested it's not. And so here's the table that kind of summarized most of the tumors, and you can see the author's conclusion for the vast majority of them. GH therapy is probably not associated with tumor occurrence, no increased risk of relapse, and this is either different types of cancers, which is this is a CNS tumor, glioma, leukemia, it's of course a white blood cell. Uh, this is another uh, study uh, that suggested no increased tumor or brain tumor occurrence, and that's even after radiotherapy and GH therapy. Um, GH therapy is safe in all children. Uh, this uh, CCS are children that are uh, childhood cancer survivors. Doctor, so, where did the rumor get started then that this causes cancer? So that's that's a great that's a great um, thought. Well, it really it really is um, associated with a couple of animal studies that have looked at IGF one level. So IGF one. So uh, taking a step back, growth hormone causes a release of a protein called in insulin-like growth factor one. And that protein is associated with growth with cancer growth, right? Okay. So and we know this because a particular medication that's used for individuals that are growth hormone deficient uh, in Crocs, right? That is essentially a pharma grade version of IGF-1. One of the right. side effects is <laughs> cancer Tumors. occurrence, right? Tumors. Yeah. And so the idea is the extrapolation they made was like, well, growth hormone increases IGF-1, so therefore you must get cancer. But the reality is if you take appropriate doses of growth hormone, remember this is what, this is a replacement doses, one to two IU, which is what I script, uh, the likelihood of you suffering from cancer is almost nil. This is a, a dated article that kind of talked about the U-shaped curve for mortality with IGF-1, right? Now this range has actually been addended. It's somewhere between two to 250. It's not 120 to 160. But as you can see, there is a U-shaped curve in which if you have low IGF-1 levels, you'll develop frailty, inflammation, uh, cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, sarcopenia, because IGF-1 is very important for muscle mass, bone growth, uh, improves uh, cardiac health, reduces atherosclerosis. And then uh, you stay within that range, you're optimal. But if you go to an excessive range, that's where you get the risk of cancer, type 2 diabetes, and potentially coronary vascular disease, right? It really is all about titrating the range. And somewhere between most of the anti-aging longevity doctors and the research out there suggested somewhere between uh, 150 to 250 is considered optimal. 
right? And that's where we try to keep our levels. We check our IGF-1 levels to ensure that they're there. As long as you're not increasing that, you should be okay. Now, what is a group of individuals that routinely increases that amount or goes beyond that amount? Well, bodybuilders, right? And so the reality is I can say with pretty good certainty, if you're taking the uh, GH in optimal doses, say one to two IU of growth hormone or the growth hormone secretagogic dosing that we recommend 10 units nightly, you're likely going to be okay. Now, if you are not doing that, if you're taking four IU or eight IU, or uh, I actually spoke to a uh, a patient of mine that was a former bodybuilder, and he said that uh, people are taking eight to 10 IU routinely. If you're taking stuff like that, well, then all bets are off, right? And so... That's one thing that I am a little interested in. Growth hormone, the usage of growth hormone in uh, athletic endeavors really has exploded over the last, uh, you know, five to 10 or maybe 10 to 15 years. And it'll be really interesting to see if these individuals succumb to different cancers. I would be really surprised if some of them did not. This may or may not be true, okay? Okay, I want to make sure this is clear. So Lance Armstrong developed testicular cancer, but it was widely rumored that he was using growth hormone (laughs) prior to that development. So there was a lot of controversy in regards to that. I'm not going to make any assumptions about this, but we do know he used large amounts of anabolics. Again, this is not substantiated, and this this is just entertainment purposes only. We may or may not have some clients that might have been working with him. They were pretty certain about uh, certain things he might have taken. Anyway, the reality is you take superfluous amounts, large amounts, uh, extravagant amounts of GH, then yeah, you're going to be at risk. But if you stay within that one to two IG, just replacement doses, doses that amounts of growth hormone you'd see as a, as a teenager, well, the side effects are minimal, the risk of cancer is low, benefits, so things that we all are looking for, improved memory, the improved uh, mineralization of our bones, the improved health in terms of your cardiovascular system, decreased atherosclerosis, improved cardiac function, the improved skin tone, you know, the improved skin elasticity, and then finally, the improved body composition, reduced body fat, increased muscle mass are things that we can look forward to. So hopefully that kind of sheds some light on the concern about growth hormone cancer and the fact that if you keep your doses, I mean, you keep your doses um, appropriate, the chances of you, you know, developing cancer is pretty, pretty minimal.